Okay, hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to add a custom seam allowance, or sorry, a predefined seam allowance or a custom seam allowance to your finished sewing pattern or finished E pattern. Um, as you can see in front of us, we have the E pattern. Now, if you've been following along with some of our um, previous tutorials, which is Adobe, sorry, pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator, then you'll understand what the cutting table is and also what an E pattern looks like and obviously how to customize it. And also these tools on the left hand side and also these tools on the right hand side. Um, if you're new to um, let's say to Pattern Lab and you haven't seen those tutorials, I highly recommend having a look at those because it explains everything. Um, it gives you a bit of background on what we're actually doing now. Okay, so please have a look through those. If wherever you are new and you'd like to carry on with this tutorial, then simply on the tutorial page you'll find a download link for the cutting table and also for the bodiceblock.svg, which is the e-pattern. Um, so very, very simple. Uh, simply download those, save them to your desktop, unzip them so you have the actual files, and just open them up in Adobe Illustrator. So here, for example, you can just go, this is our desktop, bodiceblock, cutting table. Just open these both up in Adobe Illustrator. And then with the bodice block, as you can see here, let's just zoom out a little bit, just go to the big selection tool, click and drag over the entire area and go edit, copy, then go to your cutting table and go edit and then paste. And as you can see, it'll just paste it onto cutting table for you. I'm not going to talk too much about the cutting table because we've mentioned it in past tutorials. However, it's very important that you have this little brush here for this tutorial or this little icon. To find that, you can go window and then brushes. Okay, and that will show you or bring up all of our seam allowances, our preloaded seam allowances. So as you can see here, we have 0.5, 1 cm, 1.5, and then we have inches as well. So quarter inch, half inch, and also 5 eighths inch. Also, it's a good idea to set up your rulers uh, later for the custom seam allowance. So what you do is simply go view and then rulers. I've got mine showing, so just go view, rulers, show rulers. And then right click on the top bar and you can change it to centimeters or inches depending on what units you use. I use centimeters. And also just go to your Illustrator preferences units and just make sure you see how it's in pixels, just make sure it's centimeters as well. Okay, or if you're using inches, make sure it's inches. And click OK. Perfect. Okay, so to add seam allowance to our basic block or our E pattern or your finished, let's say, um, yeah, your finished pattern. We're going to use the small selection tool, which is this white one here, or the direct selection tool. We're just going to click and drag over the two outside lines, okay? So we're just selecting the outline of our block. We do not want to select other elements, just the two outlines. And then next, we're just going to simply go to our brushes, so just click to open, and we can now toggle. So that's 0.5. If you hover, you can see it says 1cm. Hover, 1.5. And we just toggle between our seam allowances. Really simple, okay? So I'm going to go for one centimeter seam allowance because this is uh, my well, the unit the I obviously live in the UK so this is the units that I use and I use one cm because I know that this block is well fitting maybe you should use 1.5 if you feel you need to adjust it slightly for fit I'm going to use one cm perfect okay so what I'm going to do is let's just uh, minus that so let's zoom in here so as you can see we have got seam allowance but at the moment we have an inner line and we have an outer line Okay, now the reason why we have an inner and outer is because we use brushes in Adobe Illustrator, hence brushes. And to create a brush, we need to make sure it is even either side of that central line. So to create a functioning brush, we have to have 1cm seam allowance on this side and also this side, so that it fits on the center of our line. But that's, it's not a problem. We can remove all of this archiving. It's very, very simple. All you do is, so with it still selected, maybe you've clicked off, because at the moment you see um, these lines are not editable, it's just this one central line. So to be able to edit these lines and remove this inner one, we need to basically expand this brush. So just simply click and drag over those two outlines again, and go Object, and then go to Expand Appearance. And what that does is, it then allows you, it expands that brush, so it gives you access to those individual lines. So then just with your small selection tool, select the inner line and hit backspace. You have to hit backspace a few times, otherwise you'll only be removing individual elements, you see? Just hit backspace a few times. There we go. Okay, so now we have our block, which is looking lovely, and we have some seam allowance. It's not quite perfect just yet, because as you can see, we have some archiving here, and we have some little odd attributes at these corner points. So to resolve this, what I'm gonna do is, I'm first gonna work on the back block, I'm going to basically start perfecting this block. 
I'm going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click on this point and drag up through that line. You can also use the shift key. So if you hold down the shift key, it'll lock it to the horizontal. And I'm just going to drag it way past, okay? Because we want to make a point here, essentially. So we're just adding to our block. So for this one, I could do the same. I could drag it out. But as you can see, with that blue line, we basically lose a bit of the curve there. So we're not going to do that for this one, only with straight lines. We're going to go to our pen tool, which is this one. And I'm just going to... I'm just going to add to this, this line. Okay, see how that changes? It goes to a little um, line from a star to a line. Just click that and then draw out. Hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal. And just click and then we're going to join these lines just like that. Okay, so that's our first one done. We're going to remove this element later. I'm going to do the same for the inner line. Small section tool, click and drag this one. Once again, I don't want to drag it out because I'll lose the curve. So we're going to go to the pen tool. I'm going to click on that endpoint. Uh, horizontal, lock it to the horizontal, the shift key, click, and then just join that as well. We're going to remove these later, so let's not worry about that too much. Same for this top bit here. I'm just going to get that small selection tool, click on that point, and drag it out. And I'm going through the line, not above it or below it. I'm going through that line. With this one, we can probably get away with dragging this. Yeah, we can. So let's just click and drag that one through. I'm looking at this point here and trying to gauge 1cm, 1cm. And then to remove these two little points here, we go to our small selection tool, sorry, our minus um, or delete anchor point tool. Click on that and then just remove those points. Great stuff. Okay, let's have a look at the rest of our block. We're going to remove all this later. Let's go down to the bottom. Okay, so I am someone that does not like having seam allowance within my dart. I prefer this just to be joined, okay? So to do that, you can either leave as it is if you prefer this, or go to your plus anchor point add anchor point tool. I'm just going to draw a guideline out from that point or from that line until it meets that seam allowance and just add a point. Same with this side, drawing a line out, add a point. The reason why is so that we eventually want to have these two points as one straight line. So we've just allocated or marked those on our seam allowance. Next I'm going to use my minus or delete anchor point tool. I'm just going to start removing these points because they're just not necessary. We don't want to use these points and it should give us a nice straight line eventually. Let's go up. There we go. Okay, but look, as you see, there's another point here. So let's just remove that point, remove that point, and as you can see, those two points now are in line with the dart, and that's our lovely straight edge. Great. Okay, so how do we remove these elements at the top here so we have a nice clean outline? And how do we remove this? Very, very simple. We're going to go to our small selection tool, click on the outline of our block. You can see that's all been selected. Going to go to the Pathfinder tool, which is this one here. You can also find it in Window Pathfinder. And I'm going to use the Unite. Okay, so I'm just going to click this one. It's two squares overlapping with a white fill. I'm going to click Unite. And what that does is it removes this archiving. And also, it then, you see how these are now completely separate items. So let's just simply select that, hit Backspace a couple of times. Click on this one, small selection tool once again. Click on this one and hit Backspace a few times. We're then going to do the same for the inner line here. You see how these are one item? If we hit the Pathfinder, Unite, it'll just then remove it. And that creates a lovely polished finished block. However, there's one more thing we need to look at, which is this top edge here. So, essentially once again, we want to go to our plus anchor point tool, or add anchor point tool, draw a line out, mark it on the seam, or the seam allowance, mark it there as well. Get our minus anchor point tool, minus, minus. There we go, perfect. So that's our finished front block. Now let's do exactly the same for the back. Oh, sorry, this is the back panel. Let's do the same for the front. So I'm just going to get my small selection tool just here. I'm going to click and drag through the line. With this one, I'm going to add this time. I'm not going to drag through because we're going to lose that point. So let's get a small selection tool. So I'm going to get my pen tool, this one. I'm just going to click and then draw a line. There we go, and then add it. Same with these. Click that point, drag it through the line, get my pen tool, add. There we go, we can use this line as a gauge. Look, that's roughly about 1cm. There we go. And let's do the same for the bottom. Remove this inner dart. So I'm going to get my plus add anchor point. It's going to move out. And you see how it's locking to this point? Basically, it means there's one point very, very close to it. Let's have a look. Small selection tool, click that line. I'm just going to drag my line out. The closer I zoom in, the more detail I get, so I'm not gonna, it's not going to conflict with this point. So just zoom in, drag that line down. 
There we go once again, gauge that line down to about there. And then now we're just going to remove those points. So minus anchor point tool and then just delete these. Same with this one. Oh, we've got one little one there. Remove these points. There we go. Okay, perfect. So next, once again, we just want to remove this. Let's go to our small section tool, select the outline, and then go unite. Select that element, hit backspace. Select this element, hit Pathfinder Unite, select the element, and then delete it. Perfect. So now we have our uh, finished bodice block, and it has seam allowance, and it's looking gorgeous. There's one little thing to mention. So in the lab, if you have, let's say, for your E pattern, selected no seam on the front, then you will get this text, center front, place on fold. This is obviously different to what we have displayed here, because we have seam allowance on the front, which means there's going to be a seam here. So if you want to add a fold line here and remove the seam allowance, it's very, very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to select this inner line, go to our cut tool, and we're going to remove at that very top point, just going to snip here, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to snip at the bottom as well. We're then going to go to our seam line, and we're going to get our cut tool, and then literally trace a line out from there, and that pink guideline should help, and then just snip at the top, trace the guideline out, and snip. And then with our small selection tool, we can select both of these elements, hit backspace, and then we remove that line. But now we must add a fold line. So let's go all the way over here to our key. I'm going to get my small selection tool, click on that fold line, and this basically adds the attributes of this line. So that dashed line is going to be added to, it's going to when we next draw a line, it's going to use the attributes from this existing line. So let's go to our line tool. I'm just going to click at the top here, just this one. I'm going to click and then drag all the way down to the bottom and hold the shift key to lock it to the uh, vertical. And I'm just going to release. And there is our fold line. But once again, sorry, let's just move this up. Hold down the shift key once again to lock it to the vertical. And that is now our beautiful new place on folds um, block. We have the same on the back here. So center back, place on fold. Let's do exactly the same thing once again. Let's go to our cut tool, cut the top, scroll down to the bottom, cut the bottom. We're also then going to cut the seam allowance. Just let's scroll out a little bit, snip, get our small selection tool, select both these lines, hit backspace. And next, we're going to get our fold line, go to our line tool click and drag from the top all the way down to the bottom. Now for some reason it doesn't preview but that's okay. Let's just zoom out a little bit. There we go. Let's do that again. Let's zoom out and do that. There we go. So we can see both endpoints. Get our line tool, click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical and release. And there we have two our blocks which are absolutely perfect. Lovely. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom seam allowance and add it to this brushes palette over here, okay? So you can add your own complete unique, unique custom seam allowance. And to do that, it's very, very simple, okay? We're just going to navigate to a, a bit of the screen where we have some space to breathe. Let's go to our line tool. Let's click on the line tool. And let's click and then drag, okay? If I hold down the shift key, it locks it to the horizontal. So just make sure it's locked to the horizontal, always and just release and that will obviously draw a line. Next go to your stroke and then here if for example you just see this when you go to stroke just click the burger menu and go show options and this gives you some options. So here you can change the weight of that line so it's completely up to you how thick you want that to be. I would keep it to probably about two point and you can also add a dash line if you want to. I would also not at this point because this is going to be our outside or our seam line okay so we want to keep it quite thick. So let's just go two point to remove any dash Let's then select it and hit the enter key on our keyboard. And this is the move dialog box. We featured this in, in past tutorials. Uh, so take a look at those. So we're going to go zero horizontally. And we're going to go down by, let's say, we've got 0.5. We've got one CM seam allowance. We've got 1.5 seam allowance. Maybe we want 1.75, just for the sake of an argument. So in the vertical, we're going to put 1.75 centimeters. And here it's very important that you have your rulers, as I mentioned before, set up to be centimeters and your preferences and units to be centimeters. Because when you make this, uh, when you add this input here, it needs to be in CM. And you can see it's just marked there. Just simply click copy and that will copy your line. And then just hit Control D or Command D on your keyboard and that will duplicate the last move. Okay, so we now have three lines, which essentially is our brush looking great and we know for a fact 
that this is 1.75. There you go. Well, it's 1.73 because I haven't marked it possibly, but let's just zoom in a lot more. 1.75, you see? Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to give these lines some attributes. Um, so for example, the middle one, I use this dotted line just to differentiate it from the seam allowance. So let's just, small selection tool, select this inner line, go back to our stroke, and then here we'll go, right, let's make it 1, so it's thinner, and we'll make it dashed. And we're going to change this to be, let's make that 40 and 10, for example, points. And then you can see it changes. We can also make it maybe 20 and 10. There we go. And so once we have our finished brush, we want to simply add this to our brushes palette. And to do that, just simply click on the brushes tool here. And then this grey space, we just want to simply big selection tool, click and drag that into that grey space. And it will say, right, what do you want to do? So here we want to create an art brush, not scatter or pattern, but art brush. And just click OK. And then here you can see, um, right, so we can name this. We can go, right, 1.75 cm seam allowance. Oh, hang on a minute. There we go. 1.75 seam allowance. And here we need to make sure the direction is left or right. It makes no difference which way. But make sure it's not up or down. Just make sure it's left or right. So let's go right. And then here what we're going to do is uh, just make sure the overlap is this little one ticked here. And this is all fine as well. Just simply click OK. And as you can see, it's been added to our brushes palette. And 1.75, if you hover over it, you can see it's there. So let's just move that up into its correct position, which is probably about there. Let's see. One quarter, nope, up one more. So let's have a look. That's 1.5, that's 1.75. Great. So they're now all in sequence. And you can move these around just by clicking and dragging. So let's just get rid of that. Just simply big section tool, get rid of our, our brush. You don't need it anymore because it's now been saved in the brushes palette. And let's just draw an object. But, 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 but. There you go, a nice looking object. Let's just make sure we remove the dotted guideline. There we go. And then what we do now is we select this object and we go to our brushes and then we can go, right, I want that to be 1.75. And there is your seam allowance. And then obviously as before, we just go object, we're going to expand it, we're going to remove the inner, and then here we're going to extend that line. We're going to extend this little one, and then we're going to go to Pathfinder. We're going to get rid of those. And there is your new object with 1.75 seam allowance. Let's just zoom in to check. It's, let's have a look. There you go. 1.75. Perfect. And we can even check that with the document info objects. 1.7505. Perfect. Okay, so that's how you add custom seam allowance. So feel free to experiment and play with that one. Okay, so next we're going to be looking at... Um, transferring these digital patterns, these finished digital patterns, onto p our PDF templates so we can then create multi-page PDF documents in a range of different sizes and you can then obviously share them, you can sell them, um, yeah, do pretty much anything with them. So it's just transferring them from digital to paper.